So my love for Bangkok, just Thailand in general, is so much. Each time I land, I'm just like, oh, I feel like I'm back home. So I've been coming to Thailand for the last 10 years. So when I first tra started traveling, I was backpacking around Thailand. I was 23 years old, staying in $10 a night hostels. When I wanted to get fancy, I might get a private room for like 30 or $40. But I would not trade those experiences for anything. Like literally some of the best times of my life. But this year, I'm turning 33 years old, and quite a few things have changed since then. Um, I have a marketing company with my business partner, John Pemberthy, where we teach uh, companies how to market with social media marketing and build sales funnels. And that's a, you know, a multi-million dollar a year business. And then I also have a financial educational company with my business partner, Tiffany DeBudgenista, which is also a multiple seven figure a year business. So things have changed. And this time, I'm coming back to experience Bangkok in a little bit of a different way. And so so one thing that I just want you to kind of be aware of, a lot of people don't know how blessed they are right now currently. To be in the top 1% of income earners in the world, you need to earn about $32,000 a year. Sounds crazy, right? So I'll actually put a link in the description. It's called like world income. Plug your income in and you'll see where you rank compared to the rest of the world. So like, for example, in Thailand, the average income is about $450 a month. Right? That's the average income. And now, but in Bangkok, you know, they have more money. It's a big city. So that the average income is about $800 a month. That's about $9,000 a year. Right? So just keep that in perspective. But not everyone in Thailand has low incomes. Like, for example, I was talking about hostels. One of the hostels I stayed in back in the day was owned by my friend um, Flash. And so his, his family has, you know, huge family businesses. Like, they have some products that are literally in every single 7-Eleven in, um, in Thailand. That's over 10,000 stores. They have, and he has multiple businesses. Put it like this. Um, I was just hanging out with him here in Bangkok. And he's just purchased. He has, you know, two kids now. <laughs> he's like 37. But, uh, and then he just literally purchased his new home, $2 million cash, USD. So it gives you a spectrum, and there are so many wealthy Thai people um, you know, within Thailand. So while I came here, um, I did fly business class. So when I first started traveling around the world, I was always flying in economy. But as time go on and as my income grew, now a lot of times if I'm not using my miles or I'm not getting a system-wide reward, especially for these longer flights, I do like to indulge in business class. And then I also love the lounges because you also get to check in quicker, all of these benefits. And so for me, like I said, if it's more comfortable and it's quicker and I can afford to do it, I would love to have those experiences. And so this video is a little bit different. And so I had the opportunity to experience Bangkok with one of the most amazing individuals on earth. So for me, I put my videos on YouTube, on Facebook, but the person that I got to travel around Thailand with this time was Kelly Edwards. So she actually has a travel show on the Travel Channel. She's an adventure traveler. And she is the first woman in seven years to have a show on there. And she's the first black woman ever to have a show on the Travel Channel. So she's just not a regular woman. She literally is a, pi a licensed pilot. She has like an advanced um, scuba diving certificate. So like she's going like 100 meters deep, doing all that crazy stuff. She's like a real life Laura. Croft and she actually has like I said her own show on the travel channel called mysterious islands so where did we start this trip off? We started at the Lancaster. So Lancaster is one of my absolute favorite hotels in Bangkok. It's a five-star hotel. And so people always wanna know, so how much does it actually cost to live this life? So the amazing thing about Bangkok is the value for your money, pound for pound, it is hard to beat. So like a deluxe room here, um, not, you know, not a suite or anything, it's about $120. But now like if you've seen my London video, to get a nice five-star hotel in London, you're paying about $500 a night just for like the regular, you know, deluxe type of rooms. So we had that room, that's where Kelly stayed. And then I had, um, I was like, yo, let me be a little fancy. And I went ahead and got the suite. So that was about $500, um, amazing suite, the decor in there, the couch, like the bathroom, the I was just like, wow. This is like what dreams are made of. Absolutely loved it. 
And so the service at the Lancaster, I cannot say enough about it. Um, they got a really cool rooftop pool. And one of the things that made me book here was a jacuzzi. I love a hot jacuzzi with a view over the city. So they had that. And then here's another thing. A staple within the Thailand culture is sticky rice, right? Mango sticky rice. And so it doesn't matter if you're eating on the corner, like corner street in some little alley, or you're at a five-star hotel like this, pretty much every place that actually shows homage and like tribute to the Thai culture will have mango sticky rice. And so what else are we covering in this video? So there's some staples. Anytime that you come to Thailand, they have some of the best rooftop bars in the city. You've gotta go get a suit made, like custom tailor. You gotta hit the river. And then also they have some of the most iconic movie theaters and malls in the entire world. So that's some of the stuff we're gonna get into. And then also I got some little tricks um, up my sleeve. We went actually outside of Bangkok for about an hour and a half in an absolutely phenomenal place. But one thing people love to do when they come to Thailand is shop. And the malls in Thailand, specifically Bangkok, are world class. I guess because they're saving money on all these other things, they're like, hey, let's spurge with shopping. And they have this new mall that was just built, Icon, Icon Siam. It's out of a movie. You roll by, it's got the Louis, it's got the Gucci, it's got all these fancy ass brands. And in the mall, they just have some of the most over the top ridiculous things. They have some rooftop restaurants. And then on the top floor, they have one of the most iconic movie theaters that I've ever been to in my life. So when you roll up, you're like, man, am I walking into like a red carpet premiere? Nobody does movie theaters like Thais. And I put that on my mama. Like, I'm telling you, nobody does movie theaters like the Thais. You walk in and you're just like, yo, I feel pretty fancy today. And then so we did the luxury theater experience. And when you're waiting in the lounge area, before you go into the movie, it feels like you're waiting in a first class lounge. You can order whatever drink you want. They've got the foods out. Um, it's just a beautiful, inviting experience. Everyone's just so polite. And then so when you actually roll into the movie theater, you can order whatever you want. If you want a bottle of alcohol, you can do it. We ordered a bottle of rosé. And so, you know, they come over, pour it up while you're watching the movie. You got your blankets. It's like, yo, what kind of place is this? One of the most incredible ways to watch a movie. Myself, I fell asleep. I didn't even make it through the movie. It was that comfortable. And then one more thing about this thing, like I told you, the over the top thing. If you want a super exclusive experience, they have this private cinema where they like, have like lounge chairs and everything, and you can rent this thing out for just yourself and a date, or if you want to bring a party of 12 and like have like a Michelin star cook, like a uh, chef uh, come and cater for you, you can do that. And so I think it's about like $2,000 and you can run up this whole cinema, one of the most epic things I've ever seen. But we didn't actually film that part, but I saw it, like if you go in there, go ask to see it. Amazing, and if you're there and you want, or you want to do a birthday party, or if you want to do a screening or something just amazing like that, you can do it there unbelievable. So then after being in the city for a few days, we wanted to get away for a little bit. So I did a Google search and then I was just looking at places that you can go. So I've already been to Ayatua before. And then I was looking at this other place. It said Khao Yai and I was like, I've never heard of it. I've been coming to Thailand since 2011. I was asking other people, they're like, no, I've never heard of it. And then so I started Googling it. I was like, wow, this place is incredible. It looks like a fantasy land. And so it's about uh, 70 miles outside of Bangkok. And so I was like, yeah, let's switch it up. And so, like I said, with traffic, you can maybe get there an hour and a half, but if traffic's crazy, it might be two and a half hours. So I found this amazing five-star hotel. And so we get there, so I, bit, I booked the penthouse and the, the room was incredible. So the room normally goes for about a thousand dollars a night, but they were having a special, so it was going for $500. And it, has a, it had two huge bedrooms, an amazing view. Um, and then on the patio area, literally your private pool. Um, it has a jacuzzi, it has a sauna. I know this stuff sounds extra fancy, but like I said, if it adds to the experience, I want to experience it. And I def and that I think the regular rooms there maybe were like a hundred. 50 bucks or so, but and so I'm not gonna mention the name of the hotel. We didn't have permission to film that. I literally messaged, I went to the front desk, I was like, hey, we're filming this video. Would we have permission to film? And then they're like, I was like, hey, well, can you forward this to a manager? So I emailed them and then no one emailed me back. So I was like, I'm not gonna go out my way to promote this place. But I was like, but this place looks too dope not to include in the video. And if you're investigative enough, you can find out the place. But I ain't gonna give them no shout out. <laughs> 
But let me talk about things that you have to actually do in Cal Yai. Oh yeah, and another major tip. Public transportation there is non-existent. So either when you get there, run a motorcycle or have a private driver that can drive you around all day. And so depending on your motorcycle skills or if you want to have if you have a family, um, you know, will depend on, you know, will depend on the route that you're gonna take. So number one thing that you cannot miss when you go to Cal Yai, the national park. This place is what dreams have made of absolutely phenomenal. So you might see like a random elephant walking by. We didn't get to see it, but I've heard about it. Um, or you might see an elk or a moose. <laughs> JP knows all about that. That man was scared. <laughs> but actually, let me rewind. Why did he have fear in his heart for animals that day? So um, you literally were winding up these windy roads and you see monkeys everywhere. It's just so majestic. And then JP, you know, being the filmmaker that he is, he's going to like get the shots, wants to do a close up. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking. Actually, JP, play, play, can I go back in my Instagram story and like pull that up? So that's why JP was a little fearful of the animals today. And so he was riding on his bike, and then the moose or the elk, whatever it is, looked him dead in the eyes, and then he just started going on his motorbike like, I don't see you, bruh. I don't see you. <laughs> and then, um, so but I'm telling you, oh, and then the waterfall at the National Park, phenomenal. I think I, said, I might have said phenomenal like eight times. But this thing is just so amazing. And the great thing is, it looks like you have to hike down some crazy place. But it's actually not that hard to get to. So I'm like, I like it even better. And then there's so many activities to do there. But I was like, this is a Bangkok video. Um, but we did do a wine tour. And yo, <laughs> it was not the business. There was like probably 40 people in our group. Like, so the actual facility, like the winery, the place looked amazing. But because we were like 40 different people, the experience just wasn't that good. And they only give you like three little sips of wine. Like I've done wine tours before. And I'm like, they give you like a limited wine and the experience is like so much better. And maybe like a group of eight of us. And it was just like the most amazing time. So if you could actually, book a private one or have a smaller group, um, that's what I'd recommend to do if you're doing a wine tour um, in Khao Yai. And then, like I said, they have so many majestic places. I don't know if this place looked like the Lord of the Rings or just something out of like a movie. Um, so we roll up and then they have animals. So like I've got like these sheep and I even had a, I'm not too good with the name of animals, but I was picking up this little sheep lamb thing. Yeah, but anyway, you get the point. The grounds here just felt like you were on the set of a movie. Um, it was based a lot off of Italy. Like I said, the animals, they had the ice cream, everything was A1. But after, you know, being in Khao Yai for two days, it was time to head back uh, to Thailand, or well, not to Thailand, to Bangkok to experience more of the city. So it's not an official passport heavy video until your boy gets his hair cut. So it doesn't matter what level you are in life, you need a haircut to stay fresh. And so this is like one of my favorite chains in Bangkok. And they have like probably like five or six different ones throughout the city. So I know that for me, if I want to get my hair cut, this place is so official. And so for me, once you got your hair done, one of the coolest things that I've ever done in my life is actually getting a bespoke suit. And so in Chicago, they started like 2000 two racks, two grand for a suit. And that's at like the, you know, the starter level. And then they go up to, you know, you get a Bryony, like talking about $10,000 for a suit. And so in Thailand, they started like $300. And so I'm like, man, not even, they started like 150, but like the good quality starts at like $300. And so that's what I got. And I was like, man, having something that fits to your body is like anything that I've ever done. And so this time I went back to Woolwich. I've had it before, but I wanted to get the, basically the top of the line quality. So this time $800 for the suit, just like the highest quality um, of fabric. And then also JP behind the camera had never had a custom suit. And so he had his done and then as well as Kelly. So I don't know if I've seen Kelly happier throughout the Bangkok trip, like women and clothes just go together. And so getting something custom made now that's like, ooh, you're talking to my soul. 
<laughs> and so she had that done and then we also um i had a, a couple african outfits done because i'm going back to nigeria again this year jp had a couple made if you saw me in the national park i was rocking it out there and so i had it you know literally custom fitted to my body and then so after getting measured in the store um a couple days later i think like three days later after they've done it and they had like the um the first bit done and so they come for the second fitting and i was busy so i said hey just come to my hotel suite and so they came over jack came through um you know brought it over did the measuring did the fitting i was like man this feel good and then i called kelly over from her room to um you know basically have her fitting done and so the service that's also part of the experience of having stuff done and then like i said jp got his chino pants had like pretty much i don't know the the bill was looking pretty crazy after that, we um, went back for a thermal time after dinner one night to go have like our final fitting. And so like I said, you can get a custom suit. Like they think they, yeah, they started like 300 for like the good quality. And then if you want to go all the way out Mac Daddy quality, you're talking about like $800 compared to like in Chicago, $2,000 at like the entry level for a bespoke. And then you go up to like five grand for like, you know, using the top quality with, get, you know, getting a couple shirts and whatnot. So you can experience that 1% uh, that life without spending 1% budget. So after leaving the tailor, right down the street, they have the Pullman G Hotel. And on the rooftop, they have the Skylit um, wine bar and restaurant. So we went there about three times and I was like, man, I absolutely love this place. I have to come share this with my passport heavy fam. And so when, if you love aged steaks, if you love um, you know, mixologists making up the most amazing cocktails, if you love wine, and then the best thing about this place is the view and it's low key, right? So some bars are super busy, like there's a million tourists. So like, this is like your low key kind of date spot. Just if you want to have a good conversation, it's not too loud. And then I recommend getting there at like six o'clock on the dot when it opens, because you're going to be able to witness one of the most remarkable sunsets of your entire life. And so, like I said, when I was there, it's a French restaurant with French cuisine. They have, like I said, everything from the appetizers to the main dishes and then the desserts. Fantastic. So this might have been my favorite experience in Bangkok. So I love sunsets and one of the things I love yachts, I love boats, I love being on the water, I love having a good drink and experiencing them with people that I love spending time with. I contacted Kana Yachts and they're like, yo, we love what you're doing, we love your videos and we'd love to host you. So this experience, I didn't actually have, have to pay for it, so I loved it even more. And so, but this experience is not, I shouldn't say it's not a lot of money, but for the experience, uh, it's about 300 US dollars for like a private James Bond boat where you can go up and down the river for like three or four hours. We actually stopped um, on the river and got a bottle of rose, because that's another thing, you can't buy alcohol at any time of day in Thailand. So we stopped by a restaurant where you can, got the rose, got back on, just a phenomenal experience. And we saw one of the best sunsets that we've ever had in our life. And so, like I said, I cannot recommend it enough. Um, Cause you can do, like before I did like this little like local boat um, before where I went, you know, down like the rivers, which is cool. Um, and then you can do like the public boats, which are like $5 or so. And it's like, you know, public transportation, you get to see it. But if you want to experience it in an amazing way, is lit, I'm telling you, it's one of the best ways to experience the river and, um, you know, and Bangkok is on the river on a private boat. And so our final night in Thailand could not be any better. We ended it at the Banyan Tree um, Hotel. And on the rooftop, they have one of the most iconic rooftops in the world. It's always rated like top 10 rooftop, pretty much with anything that you see. And so they have the Vertigo and the Moon Bar. And so when I first got started going to Thailand in 2011, I did experience it, but I experienced it a little bit different way. So um, I went up and just got a drink, right? So as long as you get like a drink, and I think drinks were like 12, dollars um you know you're able to go there. i was like man 12 dollars for a drink right but as you get older and you will experience other things you're paying not just for only the drink but the experience and all of these amazing things that i did not appreciate as much before or maybe just i couldn't afford them and so this time was truly unbelievable it's like 61 stories up and when you get there it's truly breathtaking we weren't just getting a drink, we're having like a full meal. We just had one of the best times you know, of our life, just kind of reflecting about life and how far we've all come. Because where you start in life is not where you have to end up. And like I said, um, 
the experience on the rooftop, no matter if I was having my, just my $12 drink before, or I'm having like this full out meal that costs hundreds of dollars, right? And so here's another thing though, even if you're not part of the 1%, you know how you do these certain things to like reward yourself and splurge with things that you don't do on a regular basis, right? You work so hard throughout the whole year, so there's some things that you pay for that you wouldn't normally do on a regular day. Like this is one of those things. So even if you have to spend a couple hundred dollars, right? It's an amazing date night, right? It's an amazing experience just to spend with your family for them to experience it. But, you know, all in all, I want to um, thank the, you know, the buy -in tree, um, the venue tree for actually giving us the opportunity to film and give us permission. Uh, and I just want to thank Bangkok and Thailand and the people because the people are what make this place so special. It's called the Land of Smiles for a reason. And it's the reason I keep coming back and spending my money, you know, to add to their economy. Like I do at the end of every video, I get to give a big shout out to the man behind the camera, Mr. JP Soap Bay Poppy. That man is a magician when it comes to shooting and editing. So if you want to learn more about filmmaking, he is one of the top people to check out. A big shout out to Miss Kelly Edwards for flying all the way over here to be a part of this video. Um, I was so grateful and just inspired being around you. Um, and if you want to go watch an amazing adventure show, because you know I ain't flying no plane, I ain't doing no crazy scuba diving, go check out Kelly. Hit her up on Instagram. Tell her the boy sent you. Um, Try not to blow up her DMs too much. Actually, no, go blow her up in the DMs. Um, you know, leave comments for her. And then also Katora, much love to Katora. She helped set up a lot of the activities and reach out to some of these uh, places that we went. And um, yo, that's it. Oh, and shout out to that boy, Isaiah, Isaiah McNeil on the music. This guy is a magician when it comes to the music. And like I said, all of these videos are such a team effort when it comes to making these videos. And I wanna thank you for viewing because without you viewing, this would be no fun making these videos. Anyways, we out of here. Take care and make it a beautiful day.